Hi everyone! In this video, in this vlog, I decided to get together several shorter videos which wasn't long enough to create separate videos. First, I will be talking about my new coloring books which I finally managed to get from Amazon. Next, I will share with you several new beautiful freebie pictures and I hope that you will also find them interesting and inspiring. Then I will be talking about my favorite brushes for watercolors and acrylic paints because I got this question. And in the end I also added some short video about area where I live and short interesting quest in the Kiev, which I hope maybe could be interesting for you. I really wanted to share with you a little bit more about place where I live. So finally, after the strict lockdown in Kiev in Ukraine was ended, I was able to get my order from Amazon. Unfortunately, I had to reorder everything because my order from Book Depository was cancelled, but I finally got my books. I have already made a flip through of Teresa Goodrich books, but apart from it, I finally got several books which for a long time were in my wish list. I really hoped to get a book by Jasmine Beckett Griffiths about mermaids in time to use it for mermaid, but now I happily will be coloring in it during the whole year. Next is Art Nouveau book by Jade Summer. Of course, I will do separate videos, separate flip through of, for all the books. Next three books. I think that I purchased them because I have some masochistic <laughs> uh, tendencies in my character. I always mourn about coloring on bad thin paper and all three books are printed on very thin paper. Two books are by Herb Leonhardt and one by Marty Noble. But art is amazing. I really love pictures, so I purchased them. And finally, I got my World Within Worlds by Kirby Razanas. My first order from Book Depository was delayed, then cancelled, and finally I got my copy from Amazon, and I can't wait to start coloring in it. Next, let's talk about wonderful freebie pictures, which I recently discovered. They all are by Fabrica Fantasy. And I think that they are quite beautiful. I hadn't tried to print them yet, but I think that quality is quite good. Subjects are definitely interesting and inspiring for me. And of course, they have full books, because here we have examples freebie from each of their big books. Books are in PDF format. I think that at least one or two of these freebie pictures I will print during summer and we will try to color them. Next part of this vlog will be about my brushes for watercolors and for gouache and acrylic paints. I got this request from one of my followers to explain which brushes I prefer and which is the difference. And again, I simply didn't know where to post this short uh, question and answer, so I put it into this video. I hope that sound of this part will be decent enough. I got a request to tell a, bit, a little bit more about which brushes I use for gouache and acrylic paints and which brushes I use for watercolors, ink tents and neocolors. Here are my two groups. Everything here is artificial, all brushes are synthetic, so animals hadn't suffered for my brushes. And the biggest difference is that brushes for acrylic and gouache paints, which are much more thick and creamy paints, brushes also are slightly harder. I hope that you can see that even if they 
band, they are considerably harder comparing to this. My brushes for watercolors, they are called for squirrels. I don't like to use brushes for a nature, from natural squirrel. First of all, because I don't love the idea of harming animals, and also because I consider squirrel brushes too soft, and they also hold huge amount of water, which can be dangerous for not very thick paper in our coloring books. And when you have artificial squirrel, or maybe mix of uh, natural and synthetic squirrel, brushes are a little bit more uh, easier to control, I would say. And the main treat which I really appreciate in all my brushes is that they are able to hold a very nice thin tip when they are wet. Here is my brush and you can see that tip is really very nice. So when I need to work with watercolors, honestly, I can limit myself with just these three brushes. Two of them are from Jackson's Art and because of their type, because of this hold, they are called quill brushes. I will leave all information about these brushes down in the info box with the link to Jackson Art and with all those numbers. And with this brush I am able to do both the huge background areas and because of the nice thin tip I am able with the same brush to color even small details. And you probably know that this one is my most often used brush. I use it for ink tents, for neo colors. I really love that she is in the same time soft, so it doesn't damage surface of the paper or pigment. And in the same time, it's nice and I can. It's not extremely soft, so I can push pigment on the paper if I want to. And again, I love amount of water which they are able to hold. Not too much and not uh, too small. So I really love these brushes. The third one, the smallest, it's, uh, it's brush without brand. I got it with a very cheap set of pencils, like this one. And I really love this. It's very simple, but size is very comfortable, especially when I need to use it with ink tense pencils. The only thing I can tell you is size. It, it's one centimeter and probably like three millimeters here. Nothing special of this brush, but it's not so bad. Other brushes which I own but which I don't use quite often is flat brush for watercolors, again from Jackson's Art. It was from one set. And my very old brush which I got from my friend even before I really started to color, when I tried to draw. Regarding sizes of these brushes, you have this number 8, this is 11, so each manufacturer put his own number. And again, if you need size, it will be about 2 centimeters and probably like 5 or 6 millimeters. Other very helpful brushes are this one. And probably they are more for acrylics, because these brushes usually they are named zero or zero zero. I use them if I need to mask black lines with my gouache or acrylic paints, so they are really very tiny. I 
I have other tiny brushes like this one. They are perfect for botanical illustrations, but they are too precious for me and I'm still too afraid to use them quite often. I use them only a couple of times when I needed to add really small details on pictures in flower year. So if you want to have decent watercolor brushes and for normal price I would recommend to go to Jackson's Art and to purchase their own brand of brushes and then after you will try them, after you will use them for some time, it will be easier for you to decide which brushes do you need bigger, smaller or with slightly different shape. Speaking about brushes for acrylic and if you use acrylic mostly for the backgrounds, it's important to have brushes for acrylic and gouache paints in two shapes. Flat brushes like this one and at least one round brush. To create a nice smooth background without visible brush strokes, nice plain and solid, I would recommend to have a relatively big flat brush. The bigger is your brush, the less visible will, will be your brush strokes. I created video about uh, some reasons why your acrylic background isn't very plain and solid, when, why there can be some stains or some lines and I will leave you a link to that video. So I would recommend to have a relatively big flat brush and the second flat brush which I really like is this one. I hope that you can see that it has a very interesting shape. It's very helpful when you need to carefully go over the main image. Usually I cover my background in two steps. First I use this smaller brush with the background color. I go over the main image to outline it and then remaining huge background space I fill with this brush. In this way the whole page looks more accurate and final result looks better. So I would recommend to have at least one big, one small flat brush and instead of this flat you can use something like small round brush. Such small round brushes can be very helpful if you want to add some details with acrylic paints like additional flowers, leaves, if you want to add some texture. But as I said, for acrylic paints I would be perfectly happy with this and with these tiny brushes for masking black lines. I would recommend to purchase your brushes in art stores, even if you go for the cheapest set for beginners, for students, not for professional grade, still I wouldn't recommend to purchase your first set of brushes somewhere in hobby store, because these brushes are synthetic and this one also is synthetic. But this one is much harder and even when I work with thick and creamy paint there are still visible brush strokes. It doesn't spread paint so nicely as this one. This brush controls paint much better, holds bigger amount of paint. So I use quite cheap brushes because sometimes I forget to clean them and you know that cleaning brushes, especially after you work with acrylic, is extremely important because after just a couple of minutes on the air your brush with acrylic paint will be completely ruined. So you need to clean them carefully. But you also need to clean your watercolor brushes. So all my brushes are quite cheap. 
This was set from uh, Amazon and I purchased it because I was very happy to have brushes in various shapes in one set. It was like this. You can see that it included many interesting brushes and it was relatively cheap. Then these brushes I purchased as a set on Jackson's Art and this one I purchased individually. All links and all information which I will be able to get will be down in the info box. I'm sorry if I wasn't very helpful here. As I said, I don't use a lot of brushes. I am perfectly happy with limited amount of them. And after I discovered these quill brushes, my life started to be quite happy and I am perfectly happy for now with these brushes. For big and for small areas, for watercolors, for intense and for neocolors. And I am happy with my brushes for acrylic paints. And finally, I decided to share with you some moments from my recent walks uh, in Kyiv, in the area where I live. Now lockdown in Kyiv isn't very strict, but amount of ill people is still quite high and it's growing. So we try to stay at home as much as possible and we are going only on short walks around streets which is closest to our house. It's nice to enjoy warm weather and we also decided to make quest for ourselves and to find tiny figurines, so-called Kyiv symbols, in the form of mini sculptures. They represent symbols which are significant for Kyiv history. The first one is Kyiv chestnut. I think that I have already mentioned that the tree which is symbol of my city is horse chestnut tree and in the end of May and beginning of June almost the whole city is in bloom. Trees are very beautiful, they look magnificent and in my opinion end of the May is probably the best time to visit Kyiv. Horse chestnut tree, they can be white and they can be red. And the first mini sculpture in this historical Kyiv quest is dedicated exactly to Kyiv chestnut. It's situated in the central in the center of Kyiv on its main street. In total, there are 25 mini sculptures so far. Um, on our first day of quest, we were able to find only several of them. As I said, we try not to go far from our house. But if you are interested, probably in a week or two, I will show you other mini sculptures, because I really enjoyed it. I felt myself a little bit like tourist in my own city. And it wasn't quite bad. Almost all mini sculptures are partly hidden in the city, on the streets, so even if you know exact address where to find it, because of the small size of the sculpture, you still need to be attentive in order to find it. Average size of the sculpture is around palm of my hand, so it's relatively small if you are on the street and if you are looking for this small sculpture.
Each of the sculptures also has some kind of fun motto. For example, Kiev chestnut is rub me and spring will be warm. Next sculpture is Kiev Skisen Pectoral. It's quite famous jewelry which was found in Ukraine and it's quite old. Now the original one is in our historical museum. And here we have tiny copy. Motto is rub me and you will touch the history. Next tiny sculpture is Kiev carriage and it was dated back to 1897. It was first time where carriage arrived to the streets of Kiev. Motto is rub it and you will always get a green light. Next sculpture is Kiev train and it's placed in historical uh, place where in 1892 was first line of Kiev tram. It was a little bit more than one kilometer but still it was a huge improvement to the Kiev transport system. Motto is rub me and you may dodge the fare. Next sculpture we found on the wall of central Kiev synagogue. It's Kiev letter and it's first letter where Kiev was named in Ivrit language. It dated back to the 10th century. Original is in Cambridge library and motto of the sculpture is rub me and you will be saved. And the last mini sculpture which we were able to find during our short walk is Kiev gramophone. It was placed where historically was the first fabric of gramophones in Kiev. It also play music, so if you switch if you will hear Kiev anthem. As I said, there is more than 25 figures, so I hope that I will be able to show you more in my next videos. Apart from this interesting quest of finding these symbols of Kyiv, I also want to show you a couple of places in the center of Kyiv. It's a little bit strange to see my city so deserted, but in the same time, I think that without so many tourists, without so many pedestrians, it's easy to appreciate beauty of the architecture and beauty of the historical city of Kyiv.
Next, I filmed a couple of areas on the streets which are nearest to my house. Just a couple of moments here and there to give you impression of the architecture in the center of Kiev. I hope that this video won't be very boring. Of course, I hope that very soon we again will be able to travel safely abroad or around our own countries. But for now, we still have to be patient, we still have to stay at home as much as possible. And maybe it will help us to discover our own places from a new point of view. At least for me, it was quite nice to travel around city of my own center as a tourist and to find all those hidden tiny sculptures. So thank you for watching and I will see you very soon with my coloring videos.